Okay, good morning once again. Uh, good to see all of you again. We are into our uh, next class. Hello to all the students who are uh, also doing the e-learning course. Um, we welcome your comments, questions, uh, discussions on the board at the e-learning uh, site. Yeah, so um, we've been, you know, we've been having an exciting time of learning and um, the last week uh, you know Charles was talking about if we could go a bit more slower uh, and I'll do my best to keep the pace um, more uh, um, uh, more steady and uh, uh, you know so that we're all able to pick learn share um, as well as be blessed through our lessons so we are going to continue on with uh, the elements of a good marriage. We started off with uh, communication as the first one. Now we're looking at uh, uh, resolving conflicts. We are on. We we looked at the beginning of um, an introduction about resolving conflicts last time. We spoke about how a lot of time and that conflicts happen. Conflicts are very common in marriages. Conflicts are common in every kind of a personal relationship. So if you relate to people, you can expect conflicts to come. Conflicts aren't bad. Um, and the idea is not to eliminate the conflict in itself, mm -hmm. but the understanding is to be able to handle the conflict, learn how to resolve and handle uh, these challenges that come as a result of the conflict. So we, so we spoke about conflicts happening due to many reasons. One specific reason we focused on was because uh, was uh, as a result of the differences that you see between a man and a woman. We saw that uh, conflicts generally, um, uh, when conflicts happen, there are certain responses that we may uh, uh, commonly um, get into. Um, we looked at some of the unhelpful responses of how, um, you know, sometimes when we get offended and angry, there are times that our responses could be destructive to us as well as to our, uh, uh, to our spouses. So we looked at that. We also looked at how do we engage maturely? What are some few, few tips on how we can engage maturely, of which we spoke about um, the first important one being the importance of um, uh, discussing our emotions, talking about what we feel, even though it may be hard to uh, talk ab about our anger or our sadness or our, um, you know, those emotions that we, we put under the category of a negative emotion, maybe our jealousy or our pride. But it is important to bring it up um, in a trusting relationship where it can be addressed. So we looked at that. So today we are going to be looking at um, the se certain steps, seven steps on resolving conflicts. So uh, I'm on page um, 115 uh, in your textbook. So if you'd like to follow through, uh, you could open the text there. We would have a lot of scripture that we are going to be uh, reading today. So if you can keep yourself prepared and, uh, you know, when when there is a scripture being uh, asked to be read out, if you could uh, pitch in and read, it would be nice to have all of us uh, involved. Okay. So we're going to be looking at these seven steps to resolving conflicts. Now, even as you look at these steps, um, remember they are not um, they are not steps that uh, that uh, uh, the book says. You know, it's not magical. It's not something that uh, okay, I have followed these seven steps, but then nothing's working, right? It these are uh, these have to be done. Uh, I think. Uh, so I, I think specifically, let's look at, um, you know, prerequisites, if I were to call that that way. Uh, one, of course, would be a willing heart, right? Willing heart mm -hmm. to come to a place of um, looking into, examining your own heart. So a willingness um, to be able to examine your own heart. <clears throat> the, the second would be uh, taking on God's power and ability to to see the situation the way that he sees it and also to to be able to resolve it with his guidance with his ability with his love with his forgiveness 
okay and the third of course requires a willing partner so i'd say these are some prerequisites when we're looking at these steps so these are simple instructions that uh, scripture gives us and this is not something that is only applied to a marriage it can be applied to any relationship whether it be a parent child a colleague a family member a friend a uh, husband wife uh, they they are they can be used across um, other interpersonal relationships okay so if when we're looking at these steps um, i've divided this into two sets so the first three and the last four so the first three if you if you you know do a quick scan of it um, the first three says um, to pray and prepare your heart the second says to receive god's empowering to love and forgive and the third is you receiving god's wisdom to address the situation so if you look at these first three steps they are mainly individual that is it is dealt at the level of you as a person as an individual okay so before you come together as a couple or as a duo this is something that you would you would need to do it's like a precursor towards the next four steps so uh, because the, the one of the as as a believer as a christian we understand that a reconciliation or um, resolving a conflict with with another person with a brother with a spouse has to initially start with cleansing your own heart and being prepared yourself so that you can get into uh, the dynamics of a relationship and working that out so the first three steps are focused on us as individuals so this is mainly uh, if you're trying to resolve a conflict with someone it's for you and it's for your your spouse if they're also following these principles it's for them to do at uh initial to do at an individual level so we will move through look through each of these uh these steps one by one and um uh you know ask the lord to uh to 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 give us a new revelation of of how we can resolve conflicts um you know sometimes when we are in conflicts we are so um bogged down by our thoughts our emotions our anger uh, our need for justice our revenge we are so bogged down by that 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 is what gets into uh the process of resolving a conflict so if i go with anger i can't expect that a conflict will be resolved in peace right or if i go with revenge i can't expect that the the conflict is going to be sorted out amicably so the first and foremost thing we need to do as individuals is come to a place of a rightness with god first and foremost because in a conflict it is true we go through very many negative uh, emotions or, or things that may completely bother us and if we aren't in a place of preparing our hearts uh, we are going to be poor representatives of god's love and forgiveness when it comes to our relationship okay so let's move through this uh, a little in detail and uh, uh, something that i'm sure all of us have heard have learned but to put this in perspective and bring the the essence of it when we are resolving conflict is i think is very beautifully put uh, in in these seven steps so let's look at the first one the first one is to pray and prepare your heart so as i said um conflicts often have the potential to put us at a back footing it can it can keep us angry it we could be harboring a lot of things that are unpleasant that are not right in front of god so you know the, some of the scriptures that uh, are highlighted here is i'd like uh, would someone please read the second scripture that's matthew 15 uh 19 and 20 could somebody read that please matthew 
19 to 20. For from your heart come the evil ideas which lead you to kill, commit adultery, and do other immoral things, to rob, lie, and slander others. These are the things that make you unclean. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Charles. So if you look at this, it says, it's from the heart that evil ideas come, right? From the heart. So the heart is the seat of wickedness. It says, it says in Isaiah 2, you know, the hearts are solely wicked. And then if you look at Matthew 12, 34, the verse that precedes that, it talks of how the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So when our hearts are bitter, or angry, or resentful, or a uh, need for justice, that's exactly what is going to bear fruit from our mouths. Like from an apple tree, you can't expect to get, I'm sorry, from a, uh, from a bitter lemon tree, you're not going to expect to get a sweet orange. You're not going to, right? So the first and foremost thing we need to do is to get a right with God. This means we come to God, we, we come to a place of coming and examining ourselves before God because of what we just said. That because our hearts um, in a conflict can be filled with a lot of bitterness, a lot of anger or whatever the emotion may be, and we operate from that place. So we, we need to come to a place coming before God and confessing what we are feeling in our hearts. So... God already knows that. But when you begin to confess, when you say it as it is, you are coming to a place of humility, to a place where you're throwing away your pride, keeping away your pride, and asking the Lord, saying, God, this is what I am feeling, and I confess this to you. You know, when we confess, we are opening our hearts to God's um, healing or God's cleansing power and once we are able to do that you know come to a place because we all know scripture well and the and when we sometimes we feel justified in the way that we have those bitter feelings we feel justified we feel you know i should be feeling like this i have been wronged i should be feeling like this but that's not what scripture says scripture says from your heart is what evil comes out so having recognized that God's word tells us that you need to come to a place of renouncing those feelings that you may be harboring inside and renouncing it and asking the Lord for his grace and help to cleanse us so that we can come to a place of um, uh, a place of uh, uh, to, uh, to have a, a pure heart as we discuss or as we come bring about this conflict. So you are going up to God and, and being very honest and saying, Lord, this hurts. The fact that this person did this to me is hurtful, it's painful, but I know that it's not something that I can control within and I bring this out for, uh, to you and asking you to cleanse me from what I am feeling and give me the ability to deal with it, which we're going to be looking into our, in, in our second um, uh, second point. So it, now this is in tune with what scripture talks about. You know, David says that in Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Would somebody read that out? I'm on page 116, um, Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Psalm uh, 139. Go ahead. 23, 24. Uh, examine me, O God, and know uh, my mind. Test me and discover uh, my thoughts. Uh, find out if uh, there is any way evil in me and uh, guide me uh, in everlasting way. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, the psalmist says that. Uh, he says, uh, comes to God and say, Lord, you're the one 
who knows me, you know my mind, so you test me, you discover what are the thoughts that I have, you know, see what is evil in me, so what are you doing is you are presenting yourself to God, not just in confession, but also to help you see what you may be harboring inside, what kind of change or restitution is it that you may need to do, so it, it just does not um, look at how you may be feeling, it's not just about a complaint where you go to God and say, Lord, you know, like these little children who complain, say, God, it's not fair. But it's also, uh, you're allowing God to help, um, allowing God to show you what are the the crevices, what, what is there in the crevices of your heart, what kind of impure, uh, untender thoughts they may be in. So, you know, even in Psalms 51, it says, create a pure heart in me. So you're taking this pain to God or whatever you're feeling and you're asking God to bring about righteousness in the way that you are experiencing this hurt. So the first thing, as we said, is to pray and prepare your heart. And this is something that, um, you know, as we, as we consciously practice this, we begin to see that the peace of God helps us to calm down, to, to just, you know, with all the clutter and all the anger and all that is there, to bring it to rest, because we've taken uh, the um, uh, time to just hand it over and give it all to God, okay? So that's the first one of praying and preparing your heart. The second uh, step, I think there's a question. Yes, yes, Christopher, please, please go ahead. You have a question? Uh, yeah, my question is just to, uh, just if you could give us a, a little more clear definition of uh, the, the heart, um, where, um, I mean, is this, uh, you know, are these thoughts that are coming, or you know, are feelings that are coming from, from the evil one, or is it, are these things that are actually inherent in, in us, uh, because hmm. we are, uh, you know, we are uh, uh, evil in nature, or uh, you know, we're not, uh, we're not good in nature. I just want to mm -hmm. get that clarity. Okay. So thank you, thank you, uh, Christopher, for that question. Now, uh, the soul part of us, that is our mind, our will, our emotions, is the is the human part of us, which responds when there are certain things that happen, so there may be conflicts or things that go on, uh, our souls respond. And some of the responses are human in nature. Like if you are wronged, you may feel a lack, you know, that you need to get justice. If you are, uh, you know, hurt, you may, you may experience a sense of anger. Now, these are natural emotions that God has given and put into us, okay, because it also helps us to see and understand what uh, what is going around in our world. So having these emotions is not wrong in, its, in itself, but what happens with those emotions? So, so repeated anger or um, uh, anger that is not dealt with turns to resentment, okay? Anger that is not confessed could turn to bitterness. Uh, sadness that is not uh, given to God could probably lead to maybe depression or extreme sense of anxiety. Worry can lead to extreme sense of anxiety. So some of them, the, the, the initial parts of it, yes, it is natural. But if we continue to keep hold of these emotions within us without handing it over to God, there is where the entry point of the evil one comes, where he uses that to, to create a mess or to create a chaos within us. Right. So the more that we uh, dwell within these emotions and, you know, like, for example, anger, um, you know, the more that we process it and say, OK, how could he do that to me? This is the 10th time he's doing this to me. Um, you know, if I forgive him this time, it's going to happen. So what happens is we continue to harbor that anger. We continue to dwell in it, allowing the enemy to 
reconfirm certain things. It's a, and, and, you know, that's when probably the thoughts of the enemy comes. Yeah, that's right. Why should you do that? Or, or why should you forgive? You've forgiven 10 times. There is no, no need to forgive. And then you have, you know, the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, uh, you know, you, you are called to forgive, you are called to uh, give boundless forgiveness. So, so the, then there becomes, uh, the, when after that, there's an entry point in into our spirits or our souls from the evil one. But then it is in, it is generated from within our own hearts, because our hearts are, um, you know, we are of the sp uh, flesh nature. And this is what we, we do come with, but then to be able to submit this part of us to the Spirit so that He could work and correct us and give us a course correction. So the initial emotions that you have are human in nature, comes out of your soul, but what you do with it uh, really, really opens up what um, the enemy walks in with and, and, and gets, gets working on. Okay, I hope I answered your question, Christopher. Uh, yes, uh, I guess as a follow on uh, question, so mm -hmm. uh, maybe just to sort of confirm what you mentioned, the initial emotions are uh, natural, and uh, mm -hmm. so uh, anger in itself is not, uh, would you say anger in itself is not, is not a sin, it's not, uh, it, it's still, it's something that's very inherent in, in us, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a very innate kind of response. Uh, mm -hmm. But what we do with the anger and uh, how it builds up, mm -hmm. um, you know, that could that that can lead to definitely a sin. Because I yes. mean, uh, you know, the the um, the sermon that we just uh, mm -hmm. sermon reading that we just read, uh, you know, where we talked about um, you know when we talked about Matthew fifteen nineteen twenty, mm -hmm. uh, there it mentions about you know very strong uh, reactions. You're just talking about right. stealing and uh, even committing right. adultery. So all those are sins. Right. And uh, but the actual initial uh, response or the initial emotion is not is not a sin. Is that is that correct? Yes. So you see that in scripture, uh, in Ephesians four twenty six, and it says um, um, it says be angry yet do not sin. So so it says let not the sun go down on your wrath. So. It's, it is okay to be angry. That is a normal emotion that may come. But don't let it stew inside of you. Don't let it go unaddressed for uh, periods of time because that's what will lead to what it said in Matthew 15, 19. It leads you know, to kill, to commit adultery, and to do other immoral things. Right. So uh, th there is also a scripture in Proverbs um, 4.23, Three, I think I I'm just opening that. I think it says guard your heart um, because it's the wellspring of life. I'm just quickly opening it. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So Proverbs four twenty three. It says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. So you are called to guard it. So these emotions that come up, yes, are natural anger. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be sad. But what you do with it, what, how you allow it to churn, to stew, to, um, to take root inside of it is what leads to these issues of life. Yeah, yes. Uh, is that clear, Christopher? Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So, um, Mm. So we, we, we were looking into the second point of it is from a place of preparation, what we are doing is to come to a place of uh, receiving from God. Now, uh, what do we, what is it that we need to receive? In a conflict, it is hard to come um, to a place of kindness and to a place of love. It's not something that we can um, evoke within ourselves. You know, think of someone who's probably, mm, so just yesterday, just last night, I had a call from someone who told me that, uh, you know, uh, her, her, her husband uh, in intoxication slapped her and attempted to strangle her, you know. So imagine situations like that where, 
there isn't a place where left to love. Okay, and I'm sure each of us in some circumstance or the other, having felt that we've been deeply wronged, we know that we can't throw up or bring up love, right? And that's where we need the power of God to help us to love so that we can come to a place of agreement. And this cannot be done on our own. And this empowering comes from the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, would someone read uh, uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 5? I am on page 116. Romans 5, verse 5, after the second point, it's the first verse there. Romans 5, verse 5. This hope doesn't disappoint us, for God has poured out his love into our hearts by means of the Holy Spirit, who is God's gift to us. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhaka. So what does it say? It says only the Holy Spirit can empower us to love and to walk in this in this God kind of love, the first Corinthians 13, the God kind of love, because humanly it is just not possible because it is the spirit, the Holy Spirit within us that produces this love. So when you walk in this kind of love, what you're doing is you have the love of God poured out inside of you that enables you to express love to your spouse or to, to the person that you are attempting to show that to, uh, to uh, resolve a conflict in. Because when you move in the love of God, what are you doing is you're walking in union with God. You're walking in one with God. And this becomes, the love of God in you becomes powerful enough for you to have victory over the situation that you may be going through. So by ourselves, you know, we are unclothed, we do not have love. But when we ask for the Spirit's empowering in us to love, our hearts are filled with that love of God. And then we are walking with God. We are in union with God. And out of this is where we, we, be, we become patient, we show kindness, we show love, we persevere, we trust, uh, we don't judge. And there is how we get our victory over, these, over the situation. So this, this love in our hearts, what does it do? It enables us to do what? Like I said, to be patient, to be kind, to put away pride, to, uh, to bring, bring down selfishness, to uh, not look at, at wrongs, not bring back a record of wrongs, but being able to look forward. What we see in the First Corinthians 13, the, the, the love that is spoken of there. So when you go to God and you acknowledge that His work, that the power of the Holy Spirit is there within you, it helps you to walk in love. And you know, even as you're praying and thanking God for, for His presence in you, it's His love that's going to do the rest of the work. It's His love that's going to help and take the, uh, the, the, front, the front row of, of working through the situation ahead. So knowing that you're not going alone in addressing this issue, but the Holy Spirit is in you, as He's promised, Okay, the Holy Spirit is in you. It's He's a gift that is given to us. He's your helper who helps you. And, and as you ask for His empowering, you are able, you will be able to go out in a lot more uh, of strength to relate to your spouse. And this love will, uh, you know, it, it translates into the first Corinthians uh, 13 love. So this empowering that you do is, is something that you know you need to uh, come before God to ask for it and come to a place of receiving that kind of love. Okay. Now, once we have done that, the next thing we need to do is you need to find a way to resolve the situation, to have the right understanding, the right wisdom to deal with the situation. Uh, you know it. There is, each of us would 
done many things to resolve conflicts. You know, it can be momentary things that, um, you know, someone probably asks you something and you need to immediately, you know, give an answer. And I think one of, one of the practices that uh, I was taught right from the time I was a child was whenever you don't know, you know, God is the God of wisdom. You say that small prayer, so say, Lord, you're the one who gives wisdom, show me what to do. And I found that quite useful even when I used to write exams. I said, God, you're the God of wisdom, show me what I need to write. Okay. So even in situations that can be very messy, it is wisdom that we need in knowing how to resolve a conflict. Okay? Especially those conflicts that have gone really sour or that has gone very intense or has become uh, very, very uh, uh, volatile. It takes wisdom to look into, into this situation. Now, this wisdom is not just to resolve, but it is also to help help look into what are the causes uh, and address those causes that have given rise to these to the problem so our god is a god of wisdom okay and proverbs 2 6 writes that and it says um, it is the lord who gives wisdom from him comes knowledge and understanding so it is he who will who is there to give you the wisdom so you need to ask asking God to give you the wisdom and understanding as you resolve this. Now, when you ask, you ask in expectation. You don't ask in doubt, right? And we've been taught in scripture that whenever you ask, if you doubt, you're like the uh, wind that pushes you, uh, you know, like the waves, right? That's, that, that, that could throw you from here to there. So when you ask, we ask in faith, knowing that God is the one who gives us generously uh, and, and graciously. That's, that, that's a verse in James 1.5. Okay? And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom, and he is the one who imparts either those, um, uh, you know, the, the revelation of what, what, uh, uh, what could be the cause, what could be a solution, and what could be a right way to discuss uh, to find a solution so it is important for us to come to a place of waiting and expectation to listen to what god says now uh, in addition to this in addition to praying in addition to asking the holy spirit for wisdom remember the god's word is wisdom also for us Okay, as it's written in Psalm 119, it says, your teaching gives light and brings wisdom to the ignorant. So not just the power of the Holy Spirit, but looking into the word of God for wisdom. Say, Lord, in this situation, what am I supposed to do? Because his word will give you an instruction or it will give you certain principles for our right living. So in addition to just praying, uh, to praying and listening to the Holy Spirit, look in to the Word of God on how you can address the situation. So there may be some times that you're not going to get the exact um, answer to a certain situation that you may be looking at. And we may face many like that, that you know you don't have a specific answer written in the Word. But there are principles that you can take on to help you come to a place of solution. Now, something that even as we are looking at wisdom, something that we have to differentiate is what is the wisdom of the world and what is the wisdom of God? Now, this is um, brought about beautifully in James 3, 14 to 18. And I'd like someone to read that. We're on page 117, James 3, 14 to 18. Would someone kindly read that? I'll read, ma'am. Yes, yeah, sure, Avni. Go ahead. James 3, 14 to 18, it says, But if in your heart you're jealous, bitter, and selfish, don't sin against the truth by boasting of your wisdom. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven. It belongs to the world. It is unspiritual and demonic. Where there is jealousy and selfishness, 
there is also disorder and every kind of evil. But the wisdom from above is pure, first of all. It is also peaceful, gentle and friendly. It is full of compassion and produces a harvest of good deeds. It is free from prejudice and hypocrisy. And goodness is the harvest that is produced from the seeds, the peacemakers plant in peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Abni. So, you know, this scripture gives you a differentiation of what, uh, what the wisdom of the world is and what the wisdom of God is. So just let's quickly look at that scripture and, and define what is the wisdom of the world. So the wisdom of the world is where you are held by jealousy, by bitterness and selfishness. That's verse 14. Okay, And it says this wisdom, this kind of wisdom where you're operating out of jealousy, bitterness or selfishness is unspiritual and is demonic, which means it opens the door for more of demonic, the more of the demonic activity to come in. Okay, so it opens the door for further disorder, for further issues to come. When we operate or when we are uh, uh, stirred by these feelings and it, it can, the, the wisdom that comes from that or the things that we do out from that is demonic and it is unspiritual and it opens the door for more of God, for more of the devil's work in it, uh, just as we had mentioned earlier, Christopher. Now, this is something that will lead to every kind of evil. There is also disorder and every kind of evil. So anything that is motivated by a negative emotion is something that can lead to uh, chaos and disorder. And that seems to be the wisdom of the world. Um, so let's look at maybe a few examples. I, I think I'd like to maybe let me let me go to the wisdom of God and then probably I will want to hear from you all. Um, in your experience, what do you see in any situation that you've seen? How have people operated from the wisdom of the world and wisdom of God? Now, let's look at the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is first of all pure. Okay, it's peaceful, it's gentle, it's friendly, it is full of compassion and it leads one to do good deeds. Okay, so you see that it is totally contrary to the wisdom of the world, where it comes from a pure heart, it comes out of being peaceful. Okay, and, and that scripture says it. Um, it is produced from the seeds the peacemakers plant in peace. So, whatever the wisdom comes, it is to generate peace. So, the, the way that we differentiate this is, is it coming out from peace? It is coming out of purity and love? Or is it coming out of jealousy or bitterness or selfishness or things that opens the door to more demonic work? So as we pray, we ask God to show us, to keep us in the wisdom of God, to be able to give a, give in our thoughts and that's why we do this earlier you know when you pray and prepare your heart and give away these emotions you're also allowing the holy spirit to fill you with his thoughts and his understanding okay and then asking god to sh uh, to show you maybe the causes of it what are ways of how you can deal with the with the wrongdoing also also showing you how you can receive, be willing to receive change and, uh, um, you know, um, receive change or receive uh, um, something for yourself so that you may need to have a heart that is different in the way that you deal with, with the situation. So let's remember that as we, uh, as we make the decision, to understand where what is the wisdom of the world what is the wisdom wisdom of god now as a footnote it's also important to know that um, yeah, you know that we should be careful not to always claim everything to be demonic although you know we do know that he is the one who brings about destruction he's the father of lies he comes to kill he comes to steal he comes to destroy but 
uh, understand that yes there is maybe certain responsibilities we we may have but also if there is any kind of um, uh, demonic work that seems to be prevalent that causes this confusion and causes this lack of peace coming to a place of renouncing it along with your spouse is also something that you may need to consider as you begin to resolve resolve your your situations okay uh, someone's waiting to be in the class uh, who's that Abhishek have they come in, come in. Uh, uh. Uh, uh, sister, name uh, one second. The blessing uh, in the ID, his name is Blessing NK, something like that. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I think that in. Yeah, I think uh, she's. Abhishek, uh, ma'am, I think this is not for our class. This is oh, for is Dinah's class. She's. Uh... <laughs> Oh, she's lost. Uh? Yeah. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, no problem. She's confused. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you, Abhi. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So we've. Uh, so what I'd like to do is we've got around eight minutes, and uh, you know, I'd I'd want you to think of situations where people have operated. Uh, or even you, you don't have to really give us what the situation is, but uh, but what kind of wisdom comes from God and what kind of wisdom comes from the world and how often we could probably get confused with the two and operate in that. So I'm leaving that open for some bit of sharing. So this will enhance our understanding and our learning also. Yes, Christopher, please go ahead. Uh, yes, so uh, in this uh, scenario that you had just uh, mentioned about, you know, last night, that call you received, um, in that case, um, you know, the, I would think the wisdom of the world basically, uh, you know, talks about, um, um, you know, stepping out of the situation or, you know, getting away from, I mean, the wife basically, you know, not uh, really, um, uh, you know, being with the husband or, at all, um, and kind of shutting the door, uh, in, in a sense, until the husband, you know, resolves his uh, uh, his alcohol issues and his uh, his violent issues, his violence mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just thinking that um, there is, I mean, that could also, you know. Uh, have have some uh, aspect of it in in the wisdom of God also, you know, because uh, in in uh, in a way it, it called could also be you know self preservation and you know being able to being able to you know uh, protect oneself. Hmm. Uh, but I think the uh, the the uh, somewhere the other the wife would need to you know intervene either directly or indirectly with the husband to you know to have him seek some help, um, there, there will need to be some, you know, um, separation until he resolves his, these issues. And, um, uh, you know, uh, this could, this could, uh, you know, lead to, you know, maybe two uh, outcomes. One could be, uh, uh, they could come back together or it could be, uh, you know, that uh, this could be the breakup of the marriage also. So I just wanted to get your view on that, uh, on the on this scenario. Okay, so so that that's a, a very good uh, observation, and I think this is where uh, you know we are in those situations of uh, what does it mean to be to have the wisdom of God. So um, uh, I, I, one of the things I think that really differentiates the two is the motive of the action. So uh, now just this example, I'm just taking this example I spoke of last night and we, we, we will really um, try and see how we can work, work through this. So what is the motive of the, the, uh, the action? So uh, to give you a brief, this has been happening in this family for the last 10 years. 
okay and it's it's a cycle addiction is a cycle and uh, there is um, you know this happens it peaks and then it it uh, comes down and then it peaks and comes down so i think she's she's in her fifth or her sixth cycle at this point of time okay and but then it has become so bad this point of time where there has been violence okay so what is the wisdom of god is number one i think to understand um what is the intention of the heart now is the intention of the heart to you know uh, the the action coming as a result of anger and bitterness and um you know you know complete hatred or is it coming as a result also of love so what what is what you're also looking at now practically speaking you're looking at the safety of the wife and the children okay in an inebriated state he did try to strangle her had to call the neighbors and as a result was what uh, uh, what uh, you know th th there came some kind of an intervention so here the wisdom is uh, you know it it may be foolish to think that being in peace is keeping quiet about the situation but uh, maybe the wi the wisdom is to really probably involve um family to involve certain people who would take uh, command over the situation so that the young children the wife are in a protected uh, environment um till a point of time that there can be some some place of rehabilitation or something that uh, you know can be actively done for the man um so it would be foolish at this point to think that you know when you act in love is to continue to forgive and to continue to um you know stay on within the situation bearing and being patient it could be foolishness here because you're putting the life of three people in stake okay but again i think what we need to look at is the motive behind the action so is her motive one to ensure that he gets help get safety for the children has people involved in it till they can come some kind of an understanding of how to move forward i would say that is wisdom that comes you know wanting to create peace in the home okay it's not peace for the moment but it is peace for for years to come or for or for the future so in situations like this we need to be careful of how uh um how we 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 give wisdom to because the wisdom of the world like i said you know she had many people uh, even her family saying you know call this let this be an end let this you know uh, stop stop it and it's coming as a result of their anger or their disappointment in what is happening but for her to come to a place of understanding that everything comes from god even a course correction for his life comes from the power of the holy spirit okay uh, yes christopher did you did you have anything to say because okay i think okay so i think prabhaka has put up a verse and says um, matthew 2652 dealing with vile issues with violence lead to greater issues for all who draw the sword will die by the sword okay okay yeah. so uh, it it is important to use the wisdom to like i said to be careful of how we deal with this that uh, we need to ensure that um there is no promotion of of any kinds of evil doing either it be violence or any form of abuse and uh, help the, the person in question with whatever they require so that you know Um, the family can also be helped so in this situation yes the, the wisdom uh, can seem uh, you know uh, as if it's the wisdom of the world that you know you, you you know you're allowing someone to separate you're allowing them to stay aside you should be in love you know just just bear through it but you use the wisdom of god for a course correction and if it's coming out of a desire to keep peace and to bring peace within the home for a point of time it may be necessary to have that separation or to ensure that they get uh, that he gets the help that he wants okay okay thank you anyone else quickly one more um, one more sharing and i think we can close for a break one more sharing anybody a different situation or anything else
Come on, I'm sure we all have lots of examples under our sleeve that we can use. Yes, yes, Charles, please go ahead. Charles, you can go ahead. You you can unmute yourself. You're muted. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else would like to? Nobody? No one has an example? I mean, we have common examples, right? Common examples. I I think I'll uh, maybe an example that um, yes yes Charles are you have you unmuted now okay so an example especially with the kids that you would do with children right there are times that uh, children come back home and tell you that you know such and such child hurt them or you know um, said something to them. Uh, what do you, what kind of wisdom do we give them? Would someone like to? I know there are many fathers there's on the group. What kind of wisdom would you like to give them? Okay, we'll we'll stop for a break and we'll come back with the answer. So as you're making your coffee and tea, think about it, and uh, we'll open the next star with this discussion. Okay. So we'll we'll come back and resume in uh, in ten minutes. Beth, I will take this when we when we come back from class. Okay. So see you all soon. <laughs> 